When going through his phone, I also found pictures of him cuddled up in bed with one of his girl besties. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, oh my, my god, god. Oh. No, th- this is getting really like my da- eyes. this is real dangerous territory now you know the drama is never ending don't let it get the best of you three two one hit it wait, wait till, till i turn, I turn my, my love, love on wait till wait till wait till i turn my love on have you heard that thing that's like apparently the first song you hear in the day is the one that sticks in your head and that for me was that. Me too. Wait till I turn my love on. Wait till, wait, wait till. till. Roll the coaster, coaster ride, ride, baby, jump, jump on. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently to get a song out of your head, you have to listen to it through. Yes, that that's the, that's the that's old the wives' science. tale. Mm, that's the science behind what it, What are other old wives' tales? Uh, old wives' tales. Isn't it like, oh, well, if you, when you're pregnant, if your belly's pointy, it's a boy. Yes. Are you more round? Or, or are you, droopy? Mm, hello. Oh, it's low. You're a boy. They say I think it's boys come forward, girls go out. Really? But potato, I don't potato. Know. What's another old wives tale? Um. Oh, if if you put cows a silly sit face, down when it's raining, cows sit down when it's raining. If the cows are lying down in the field, it means it's going to rain. <laughs> oh, I've never heard that one before. Yeah, because it'll be like, oh shit, the cows aren't the cows. Oh. Is, the cows are lying down. I think the rain's coming. Oh. I think the rain's coming. I think that's what is that? Does that exist? Yeah, I'm pretty sure okay. that's one. I've got. If you pull a silly face in the, the wind, blows. it's gonna stay like that. Yeah, it's gonna stay like that. Yeah, be careful. It's gonna stay like that. What's another old wives' tale? I always, I always think of old wives' tales around like pregnancy. That's what takes my mind yeah, too. But I guess it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like baby shower things, isn't it? Yeah, we should ask for some unique old wives' Where tales. Where do they come from? Old old wives. wives. They come from the old and the ancient. We could make up an old wives' tale. Yeah, it's just a rumor that start that that mm. is based loosely on truth. I imagine. I would hope so. Mm. Right. Bit of fact in there. We could. Okay, let's 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 make one that will start an old spread. wives' tale. Yes. If you clean your teeth with warm water, they'll fall out. <laughs> what a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's our old yeah, wives' there tale. There we go. Ooh, mm. Watch the, the hot water. Mm. Save the hot water. Make mm. your teeth fall out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and really, it's just a reason to save, save the hot, hot water. water. <laughs> oh, goodness. Don't use that hot water. Oh, my God. In my household, God, Angie Romano, the way that they were stressed that about water turning tank. that oh, hot water tank. Oh, fucking on. hell. Did you turn the hot water <laughs> Turn it off in 50 minutes when the buzzer goes, turn off the hot water. And then if you forget, bloody hell. So do you have a tank then in that house? But, yeah, because then the hot water runs out. It would it's run like, out. It's like, we, uh, who, who wants a shower tonight? The fucking hell, it's like the Victorian <laughs> times. <laughs> this, is, this was a Christmas just gone. Who wants a shower then? All right, best turn it on. Mum's like, best turn it on for about an hour then. What? <laughs> And then you're like, oh, the fucking hot water ran out halfway through. It was bloody freezing. So then what? You've got no on. hot water left. Well, then you've got to turn it on. Heat oh. it up again. There must be a tank. It must be costing a lot to heat up <laughs> yeah. and down. Heat That's up. That's why it's issues when mm. it's not turned off, when it should have been turned off. Expensive. When costly. that buzzer goes off, turn off that hot water. Wow. Oh my God, it's been off for too long. <laughs> <sighs> Hands and moan. Yeah, who wants a shower tonight? That's what it is. Who's had a shower? Well, I've just had a shower. Oh God, there's not going to be enough for me then. Better wait half an hour. Wow. Wonder what that's called then. The tank. The tank. Mm. Mm -hmm. Boilers. Immersion boilers. Is that a phrase? (laughs) I don't know. Water tank. Mm. Mm -hmm. The water tankage. Yeah. Water pumps. Water tank. What did you have in your family home then? We didn't have any of that. Where, <laughs> if you were in hot water, from, you just then? turned on tap. Where does it come We had from? a boiler. Well, you would have had a boiler too. <laughs> yeah, but we, we didn't, we didn't like, we weren't turning water. Because it was a button. It was like on, off, I had to go turn it on. No, turn we it didn't off. do none of that. I or, didn't go near, the was boiler mine? was in the garage. That was a, that was dad's zone. Or, we didn't go in there. Well, that was in the laundry room for us. Crazy. We never had a garage. Garage. I mean, a garage. Had a garage. Garage. Yeah, we, uh, we just had hot water. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've got in my flat. Like, yeah. I've just got hot water. <laughs> it's just Thankfully, there. very grateful. I've got a big boiler. Oh, is it a tank? I don't so even know. So if you've got a big tank looking thing, that is a big tank of hot water. Yeah, that's what I've got. 
Right. So you could run out, but there's only two of you in there. Think it was a five person household. But your boiler's on constant. <laughs> And it keeps it at this sort of level. Right. I can't remember. <laughs> okay. My dad will tell you. We'll get yeah. him on. Right, okay. All, All right. right. Okay. Tell spoilers. Enough of that. Okay, right. Happy Wednesday, Who everybody. Just... Happy April. Who says a garbage? Where's that from? It's from TikTok, isn't it? Garbage. No. Or a garbage. It's in something. Do you want to say pan? Garbage. It's in something. I will have triggered some of you. Happy April. Hope you had a lovely Easter. I enjoyed my chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) I got these like Colin the Caterpillar um, Uh Mm M&S. Is it a sheep and a Colin? It's a lamb. Yeah, I was like, oh, It does have lamb. lamb No, it's just chocolate. (laughs) That was very enjoyable. That's like uh, mince puddings used to have actual mints in. Did you know that? Old wives tale. That's factual. Right. Let's do this, you guys. We Happy are- Wednesday. It's Girl Talk. We did two boy talks back to back last week for Craziness. the first time in Girls Bathroom history. Um, so we've got... So it's Girl Talk this week. It's been what? long overdue. Long overdue. This is giving boy, but who gives a shit? Question of, of the week. week. What is the worst pet name a partner has given you? Ooh. We're going to start worst. strong with farty pants. <laughs> <laughs> Come I, on, farty pants. I would cry. Come on, farty pants. Come on, farty, farty panties. <laughs> Where's my little farty pants? Pumpy. She's pumpy. pumpy with the wind. I think that's another fart innuendo. Pumpy. That's quite cute. Penelope pig nose. <laughs> that's, that's not okay. Okay. Sausage, that's cute. So, little, my little sausage. My little yeah, saucy, my little saucy sauce. Saucy song. Saucy sausage. Toad. Toad. <laughs> Come on, Toad. P. P. <laughs> oh, P's cute. Sweet P. Piglet. <laughs> Piglet. I like that one. It's like Winnie the Pooh. John. <laughs> Her name is, is like Pia. Go on, John. Come on, I'm John. John. I am not John. <laughs> Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Star Wars fan. Stank Puss. <laughs> Happy birthday, Stank Puss. <laughs> Stinky Pussy. <laughs> oh my God, I'd be mortified. Yeah. Frowny Brownie. Because <laughs> I always frown at him. <laughs> Chunky Monkey. <laughs> No. Oh, God, where do I get these from? Goblin. <laughs> Butt plug. Wait, here's Goblin for me. Come on, Goblin. Oh, Goblin, you it's look like gorgeous. A a my goblin. little Goblin. Actually, deep. A Goblin. Oh, my God. Uh, my ex called me by the names of my friends that he found attractive. Oh. <gasps> That's giving manipulation at its finest. That is the scariest man I've ever heard oh, of. Pop star. I'm a music student. Oh, Manifesting for you. Wow, I love that. Shitty Come on, ass. pop star. Shitty ass. <laughs> <laughs> Another farty pants. That's the second farty pants today. <laughs> that seems to be a common occurrence. We've got my meatloaf. <laughs> 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 baby pig <laughs> or piglet okay piglet's cute I like piglet baby pig <laughs> I can't. Oh, potato baby face pig. <laughs> it's like me potato face if someone called me potato face oh it's my not god goblin. queefy <laughs> <laughs> stench it's like wench. <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> okay. Oh, hot dog's okay. kind of cute. Okay. Okay. These boys, Another where did they get these? Another pig. pig. <laughs> baby elephant. <laughs> At least it's the baby elephant. <laughs> Fluffy dog. <laughs> just, just fluffy would be Another, fine. Another, our second goblin. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Oh, goodness Not me. the goblins, please. <laughs> Calls my vagina Martin. Oh, Martin's looking very bold tonight. <laughs> Martin. Uh, sw- <laughs> swamp monster. <laughs> What? Oh my goodness! A slug. <laughs> oh, oh, that's my slug. Oh, rat. <laughs> rat is cruel. Just, just I couldn't take rat, the rat. My little hippo. <laughs> <laughs> My curvy jelly bean. <laughs> curvy jelly bean. Curvy jelly bean. <laughs> My curvy jelly bean. We've got Michael. <laughs> it's John for me. <laughs> Oh, oh goodness me. Oh, oh, let's have three more. Okay. The beast. Oh my god. <laughs> To be fair, sometimes. <laughs> oh, the roast beef. Good, good squishy lips. Oh, that's, that's cute. cute. <laughs> I love squishy lips. My squishy lips. Oh, that's cute. Pigeon. Sorry, that <laughs> just keep coming. Stinky loser. <laughs> no, that's bullying. Some of these are verging on like not okay. That's bullying. Yeah. Pigeon. Wiggle pig. <laughs> that's cute. We've got a Meledic. We'll end a there. Meledic. A Meledic. That's appropriate. The only appropriate one was Meledic. Because we are Meledic. Meledic. <laughs> or little baby hippo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was the big one? What was the stinky puss? Stinky puss. Stinky puss. <laughs> baby pig. <laughs> You're my baby pig. I love you. <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh, oh okay right. that was a good one okay oh god i could have gone on forever nicknames then. what a strange thing i know how did we get there i know i know how have these evolved but the the pig and the piglets and the hippos i think the pigs and the hippos are cute because they all they love them have baby in front of them yeah for, baby hippo for baby me, elephant i couldn't quite take Pig hippo. <laughs> I couldn't quite take or whale. I couldn't take goblin or rat, <laughs> but I could take baby hippo and baby elephant. Baby elephant. <laughs> but ugly rat <laughs> and goblin. <laughs> I don't think I would want those ones. No, the, the stank puss. The I couldn't stank take puss. that. Or the roast beef or Mrs. Beast roast or whatever it was. <laughs> I'm not so sure about those. No. Ones. Okay. Well, I hope everyone's okay out there. <sighs> Stay safe out there, guys. You know, pet names. they should just stick to babe. The classics are still in style. The classics are still in style. My love, my lady, <laughs> my gorgeous princess, my uh, queen. Yeah, what? My was angel. Princess, queen, angel. Yeah. Oh, no, I liked pop star. Oh, pop star. That was cute. Oh, my little pop star. Oh. See, the, everything sounds cute if you put little in front of it. Exactly. Because then it, it, it kind of negates the, the pig element, little pig. You know, it's like, I'm just tiny. You know, I'm not this huge monstrous pig. I'm a little pig. So it does soften the blow. Definitely. Little hippo. Little hippo's cute. Yeah. <laughs> little elephant, that's cute. <laughs> okay. I think if it was me, I'd say. We'll have to rein it in. We'll just have to rein in the pig element. The pig and the hippo element for me, for myself. But see, it shows how Each everyone's their different. Own. Each of their you own. See? It shows how we're different. Okay, we're starting here this week. This is doesn't get more girl talk than this. We're arguing over borrowing, lending, and returning damaged goods. You know, so, that will be one of the tales of, of time. Tale as old, old as, as time. time. You know, one of my first memories of being a child is probably arguing over something. As in, as in an item. Stuff. And sharing. Sharing is caring. Sharing is hard though. I gave her 300 pounds. This is the subject line. So, hi girls. I'm 23 years old, full-time manager at my job, and recently me and my good friend went on holiday together and we had an issue. Oh, I thought she was gonna say we had a great time. I was about to say congrats. <laughs> my friend also works full-time and is 23. Okay, so well done, I'm thinking guys. similar salaries, yeah. you're the same age, both get paid pretty well and live at home, but she does make slightly more than me. Okay. Okay. This holiday went well for the majority of the time. However, on the Saturday, we decided to go out clubbing. 
Fine. Before we went out, we had some drinks, some wine, made a little outfit TikTok. Mm. I couldn't find my sunglasses for said TikTok, so she gave me hers. We were quite tipsy. We left the house and didn't realize I still had the sunglasses on. Okay. Until we were in the Uber. When I realized, I immediately told her and she said, oh, just throw them in your bag. Okay. okay. She's put in brackets. These were 300 pounds Chanel sunglasses. Oh, Chanel. The next morning, she woke me up crying. She's put in capitals over said sunglasses. Yeah, it's, it's distressing when you damage- They have been scratched. You damage, you know, an item that you you You, you treasure. Precious. You treasure. Mm-hmm. So they'd been scratched. We called Chanel. They don't repair the lenses, but we decided to forget about it until we got back home. Mm -hmm. On holiday, I had offered to help her pay for the repairs as I felt slightly guilty they'd been damaged in my bag. Yeah. When we got home, she started hinting at me about her sunglasses, saying she was going to have to buy another pair. I panicked and I sent her the money to buy a new pair, the $300. Okay. 300 pounds. And I hate talking about money. Okay, so you just wanted to diffuse. You felt a bit guilty. They were in your bag. And you just thought, I don't want to get into any sort of confrontation. Just have the $300 yeah. that the sunglasses were and you can have them. Because if you felt like she was hinting. You don't want to um, make awkward. Yeah, okay. And you just, you were being the bigger person and were like, okay, I'm just going to send you the money to cover the, the sunglasses. My issue is that after a week of discussing this yeah. with my other friends and family, I feel like she has really manipulated me. After all, she told me to put them in my bag. Mm. I have also seen no sign of her buying new glasses. Mm. Personally, if this were me, I would never take money from my friend Mm -hmm. for an accident. And I also think Mm -hmm. she was being very dramatic to be crying over the sunglasses. Mm. On this night out, I also got a lot more male attention than her, which usually never happens. Must have been those sunglasses. Must have been those Chanel (laughs) sunnies. Usually never happens at Mm -hmm. home. And she complained the whole next day about how annoying the guys were last night. Oh, it it, it kind of insinuating like, oh, like. They were losers. They were losers. Mm. Right. I didn't pay the guys any attention as I have a boyfriend, Mm -hmm. but I can't help feeling like she was maybe a little jealous of that at the time. Right. I want to confront her. I know it might be too cheeky to expect even half the money back, but I have let a lot slide with her previously, including her leaving me alone in clubs and drunk shouting at me, et cetera, et cetera. Most recently, she canceled on my birthday trip to Portugal after discussing on our most recent trip how much birthdays mean to both of us. Right. Um, I'm not going into this confrontation wanting to lose her as a friend but I'm also not going to let anything else slide slide I'm hoping you guys can give me a bit of guidance on how best to go about this conversation and whether you guys think she's even worth keeping around right okay so (sighs) Taylor's old as time time. what's the next line song as old as rhyme (laughs) (laughs) song as old as rhyme (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I think that's the next one. That's why we've sung that in like the past three episodes. I just go. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Beauty. Okay. okay, right. This is a common classic dilemma. Well, it sounds like this is kind of the final straw. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you've kind of let, you know, some, yeah, clubbing issues slide, abandoning issues. Mm. Shouting while drunk, drunk cancelling like, on birthdays. Yeah, and, and you're like, "Hang on, I've just paid you three hundred dollars." Yeah, because did she say her family was kind of like, "Hang on, yeah, that sounds a bit." So I think fishy. you sent the money, wanting to diffuse and make her happy. You're on holiday together. You don't want to rock the boat. And then you've got home and you've thought about it. You've digested it. It's you kind yeah. of spoken to your mum maybe, and yeah. people have gone, "What? You just gave her three hundred quid so when d- she told you to put them in your handbag." Yeah, like, so do you think she master manipulated it from the start? I don't think so. But she's kind of just being a bit unfair. Yeah, because if if I wouldn't... Uh, well, that's what she's saying. Like, it was an accident. Yeah. I wouldn't ask my friends for cash yeah. if it was an accident. And it is... It wasn't like the arm came off. It was, it was scratch. scratches. So but she was crying. But she was... Obviously, they meant a lot to her. This was I her. would just... I would say, oh, have you managed to buy your new sunnies? Yeah, let's see them. What pair are you getting? What pair are you getting? Are you going to switch up the colour? Let's see them because you want to make sure she's not just pocketed that cash and taken herself off on holiday. I know. 
or um, new clothes or taking herself off you know to to, to, yeah. to sheesh or something have a nice night I think you were really generous to just really maybe, generous maybe a bit too, too quick off the mark to just send the 300 euro why do I keep what? saying euro are you all right dollars euros where the fuck it's are because we because she put a, I think she put a euro <laughs> sign but I was trying to keep okay, it as pounds okay 300 dollars um, oh we're in yeah. America what money sign what? is that? I'm getting so confused. Let me see the money sign. It euros, come. it's euros. Right, okay. Sorry, I've said all sorts. So where do you think we do you think we went on a weekend Spain? trip to Milan? Possibly. Yeah, Spain, Espanol. But then, you know, maybe this is just one I, of those things. That is so generous. And also you're thinking you were more than me. Like, I think you were very generous. And But listen, I think maybe this is one of those things that you just... You learn from it. Like at the end of the day, you've sent her the money now. You did, you were a great friend and you were very generous really by generous, really great sending friend. her that cash. And maybe this is just something that you think, okay, look, maybe that was a bit too um, hasty, hasty for me to me. do that. I didn't, I didn't need to send her three. I could have just sent her a hundred or 150 or something. You know, in the future, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm not going to borrow from her again. I'm not going to use her stuff again. You know, and maybe this is just a lesson to learn. And, and I, I think I would have that approach. And I would hold her accountable and just make sure she buys the sunnies. Yeah. If she's dodging the question and like not showing in these new sunnies or whatever, then there's not really much you can do. You can't Would ask you for ask money for it back. back. I mean, then, then, then it's just going to, it's getting complicated. It's gonna, it's, then it's just going to blow up. I imagine because yeah. she's going to get defensive, stop blaming you for the old sunnies again. But I would then just, yeah, like Soph said, just pocket it and be like, okay, this is a bit weird. It's a hard it, lesson it, it's to giving, learn. It's giving untrustworthy. Mm. It's like, you know, it's giving because untrustworthy. Are you, so, are you also so sure they didn't have scratches on before yeah, you put them in like, your bag? Yeah, and it's like you're so suspicious of me. Like, oh, it's all, all, all my fault. Yeah. I, I must pay for them when it was your irresponsible act for putting them in my bag without a fucking case. Yeah, if they were so precious to you. If they were so... Because also, if they were so precious to me, I'd take them back and I'd put them in my own bag. Yeah, same. Or I'd put them on my head. It's not like you snapped them in half or lost them. Yeah. So you were really generous to yeah give her the full amount back yeah so i yeah i would be tempted just for the sake of the friendship and just the general dynamic to just take the l but i would say show us a new sunny son yeah i think you are also if you want to you could go back to her and say look like i I've been thinking a bit more about the sunglasses and I think in the heat of the moment, I wanted to diffuse the situation. I sent you 300 euros, but I actually think in hindsight that- um, I'd like that back. <laughs> <laughs> you could ask for maybe half of it back. Mm. I don't know. I would feel I would feel a bit too awkward, I think, mm, in that situation. Too. And I would just think, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, I think I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to do that again. Like we've, you know- the, the general rule with giving people money, lending money, giving people money is- don't ever expect it back. No. Even if you ask for it. Even if they say, they get to say they're going to pay you back. Even if they say it's a loan. Even if they say it's a loan. Even if they say, I'll pay you back next week. Always give it away with the expectation that you're I'm never going to get back. it back. Because sometimes that happens. Yeah. A lot of the time that happens. That's why a lot of people have the rule. I'm not to don't lend, lend money, money. Any, to people anymore. because. And we've all had to learn that with friends. Like yes. We've all given friends money. They've said, oh yeah, I'll pay you back. And you never see it again. Yes. Um, so it's just something to keep in the back of your yeah. mind. It's a hard lesson to, hard pill to pill swallow. Pill to swallow. But I, I, I would just kind of log it in my mm. Susan Folder. log and be like, okay, that was another weird thing from Susan. Me too. Um, I felt, if you felt manipulated and, and, and you know, then that's exactly how it is, you know? Mm, yeah. If it was purely innocent and then I don't know you wouldn't be feeling like this and like questioning the friendship like you shouldn't yeah. have to question the friendship but the pros are you've got a clear conscience mm -hmm. you were super generous you were a very great friend to yeah, do that really great you didn't have to do that at all. at all and you can take a take a lesson from it you know yeah. mm -hmm. okay what have we got next okay so we've got do I work in the UK advice please hmm are we qualified to answer this? We can I guess give it we've a lived go. here for 26 years. Hey girls, love the pod. I'm constantly thinking I should write in as I feel like you could solve 
or at least make me feel better about all of my problems. I've decided today's the day. Stop that. Wow. Flattered. Can we really truly. solve? Mm-hmm. Truly. I know you are London girly, so I need your help. I live in Melbourne, Australia. Australia. And have the opportunity to work for six bo- months nearby-ish to London in Denham. Where the, f- Where the fuck, fuck is Denham? Denham? I'm going to get it up on the map right now. Bear with. We don't have our bearings yet here. We're not being here that long. But I oh, instantly I'm saying do it. Me Six too. Six months. What you got to lose? Denham, just outside. Denham. Denham. We're not sure on the outskirts. Denham. Oh, Buckinghamshire. Gorgeous. Ooh. Let's have a look at this. Ooh. Where is it? Okay, you're literally so close. Because we're on what side right now? Oh, it's there. she's only there. You're so close. Brilliant. That will be a 20 minute shout out that, denim. A tube right into central babes. You've got it covered. You've got it. Denham, it looks gorgeous and green. Denham Country Park, Buckinghamshire Golf Club, Denham Place. The piano wow. boat looks very nice. Wow, it looks a very You've lovely got place the to live. Denham Aerodrome. Okay. Denham Golf Club. If you like golf, Denham is a village and civil parish in the unitary authority of Buckinghamshire. Lovely. A prop approximately 17 miles from central London. Easy peasy. Hop, skip and a jump. And two miles northwest of Uxbridge and just north of Junction 1 on the M40 motorway. Good to know. Good to know if anyone's travelling. Oh, it's literally a 32-minute drive from here where we are today. My God, it's round the corner. And we're in Notting Hill. Takes that us means that long anything. to get home. You absolutely make the move. To Denham. With a partner of my current employer... I need your straight up advice as to whether you think this is a good idea. I do. I've asked my friends and family and they haven't been able to help. Hmm. For context, I'm 23 and live with my parents and two sisters who I'm very close with. I'm about to finish uni and I'm applying for grad jobs starting Feb 25. So I have a pretty long period of time to fill. Got it. This is a no brainer for me. Is it a no-brainer for you? Yes, I just want to wait to hear the end. Because like we're getting we're getting a grab job in Feb 2025. That's in a year. So yeah, we're gonna go to Denham for six months. Why not? Why not? Also, last year I traveled without my parents for the first time. You've got this in the bag then. She knows what she's doing. You know what you're doing. The trip was to Europe and was four months total. Fucking hell. You've got this in the bag. This is a breeze, babes. I spent most of it with friends, with friends, family, or my boyfriend. You got a boyfriend? Lovely. Bring him along But as well. I also missed home and my people quite a lot. Despite this, I had honestly the best time and loved the UK and London in particular. No well brainer. Then. Literal no brainer. Why Below, can no family and friends help with this problem? Below I have listed the main concerns I have. She has concerns. Okay, okay. So we must listen. The main concerns I have about the opportunity in? Denham. Denham. Booking if anyone shit. lives in Denham, I'm Shout sure there's out. some Denham locals going, oh my God. Mm-hmm. That's my village. Right. Uxbridge. Oh, we've got one, two, we've got four points. Right, so is Denham too far out to be able to experience living in London? No, it's a 30 minute drive from here, meaning it's going to be a 20 minute tube zoom in. You can zoom right in. Yeah, you can zoom right there'll in. Be, there'll be a train somewhere. Overground. There'll be a train every 20 or 15 minutes into Central, right? Straight into King's Cross or... St. Pancras. Or Euston. And at St. Pancras, you've got now... Blank Street. A Blank Street, if you're interested. Um, have you heard of it? No. Well, we've just researched it. It looks like a lovely place. <laughs> Listen, we're going to take a day trip this Today. weekend for you. <laughs> we'll send you videos. We'll do some flat views for you. We're going to find a local so Denim this tour. is Denim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you heard of it? Long, awkward, if it's obvious. We've never heard of Denim, but it looks like a gorgeous place. Yeah. And how would I find accommodation there? I'm sure there's a lot right of... Move. Right move. Rightmove.com. You click rent. Facebook, Denim. groups, house would, shares, flat on, shares. I would look on right move first where I got my flat. I would think if you're moving for work, your work would be able to support you in finding a place. I'm sure they'll be able to recommend um, like some nice areas in Denham. Yeah, because we ain't got a clue, yeah. unfortunately. Or you, you know, if you really want to experience London, you can live in London and, and you commute, can commute to, work. to Denham and then back. Because if you're only going to be in the office three days a week, it might be worth actually living more central and commuting to, to, to work. Denham. Rather I mean, than living in Denham. It would, if you want a London life experience, yeah. what you're picturing, that is going to be yeah. more It would be central. cheaper to get a flat in Denham. Yeah. And commute and, and, and then and 
yeah then having a flat in london mm. but it depends what but what's, then you could sacrifice the but then you would sacrifice space you know to live in more central right um i had a look look and it seems quite empty it did say denham is a village it's a so, village uh, so, parish hall <laughs> Community centres. Primary school. A Boots. A local little. Yeah. A village shop. Won't be open on Sundays. <laughs> a supermarket. Yeah. And greenery. But I'm not, a golf I'm, course is plentiful. And families. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have got a boyfriend though. But if you want to make friends. I mean, there's people. I, 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 there's people I, in the village. Sophia, get up city planner right now. You've got my phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Travel and accommodation. Concern number two. I'm worried about leaving my boyfriend. We've been together for three years, for that mm. long. He's super supportive of the idea because he knows it'd be an incredible experience for me, but I know he's really sad about it. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to hide it though. And when I ask, he just says not to worry about him. Oh, <sighs> my little baby hippo. Oh, little baby hip. Um, he would maybe be able to visit for three weeks at some point, but his work is really busy. So anything more than that would be impossible. I don't have any concerns about our relationship as I know we are solid, but I'm not oblivious to the fact long distance is hard. But I also think- You're gonna fly the nest for six months. You said your relationship's solid. Yeah. He's gonna come for three You've been weeks. together for three years. Yeah. Super solid relationship. This is, you, you, you have a light at the end of the tunnel. You have a countdown. It's not like you're just going, moving to London, seeing if I like moving it, I might stay, I might not. Like who knows how long I'm gonna be here for. You literally have a countdown. So which is the best way for long distance to be. You have that end goal mm. where you're no longer gonna be long distance. You, and six months you, will go you, like that. Yeah, it goes so quick. And also, you're never gonna know unless you just do it. Yeah. Bite the bullet, you know, face your fears, put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Cause otherwise you're forever gonna be thinking, oh, I wonder what would have happened if I moved to London for those six months. And that that those are just the thoughts that I don't want you to have. Mm. I don't want you to have those regrets. Because um, the time is now. Because the time is now. You still live at home, so you're not worried yes. about rent or your house or whatever yeah. like you've got no string it's no strings attached mm -hmm. you've got no responsibilities you're not going to have this yeah you know you're not going to be in this situation forever there yeah. will come a point where you can't just flee the country and move exactly. away for six months like exactly the, the stars have aligned your job's taking Agreed. you here you've got a purpose right concern number three and four well we squashed the first two so i'm not worried <laughs> <laughs> squashed squashed right concern number three Okay. I'm worried I'll be lonely and not have anyone to spend my time with because I felt that for parts of my trip, I was alone. I, I was alone for last time. Brackets, all my friends and fam are stuck studying or working, so couldn't even join me for a bit. Okay, yeah. so on your other four months of travel, you felt a bit lonely. Your mm -hmm. schedule's gonna feel like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you probably will feel you like You probably that. will, but it's about embracing that. It's about feeling uncomfortable, but enjoying your own space and going on, you know, taking yourself out and exploring by yourself. And mm -hmm. it, it, and it can, it's a really hard thing to work on. Yeah, it is. This can be scary. It, and it can be really scary, especially because you're hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles away from home. Millions of miles. <laughs> <laughs> Trillions of miles away from home. <laughs> Gazillions of miles away. I think um, a great place though to meet people, I would recommend is it work? going to um, a workout class. Yep. Like a like cute little Pilates class or yep. a little F45 yep. or a little like very like, so, or like just join a gym, like a yoga, like a social, like where you're seeing familiar mm -hmm. faces, like people your age, like you have to put yourself, if you want to make friends, you've got to put yourself in in, in environments mm -hmm. where people your age and people you want to be friends with will be. Will be there. You can't like just like sit people. at home and expect to make friends. you got to go out. It's like when people are looking for a boyfriend. It's like, well, the kind of guy I want works out. Is this, is that, is this? So people will just get nice gym memberships. Yeah. Try and put yourself in the environment where you yeah. can meet someone. And it's the same with friends. Exactly. Um, but yeah, also, I get that, that's ask, scary. Ask, you know, before you agree to this, ask the, the employer, who, who's in the office? Is it young girls? What's the what's what's the demographic what's like the in the office? If it's like, yeah, you know, we've got Susan, she's fifty three. You know, we've got Helen pushing we've got, sixty. We've got Tom and George, <laughs> late forties. Yeah, and okay, that's not really going to be a vibe. Maybe it's not going to work for you because Maybe. you want like a lovely group of girls to welcome you in mm -hmm. and go out for af uh, drinks after work and yeah. show you the ropes. That is a concern. So, and, and, and that is a concern. So we need to make sure that there's other young people there, ma male or female. Okay, that's brilliant. They're going to welcome you in. They're going to be super friendly. Mm -hmm. They're going to know you're new to the city. Start um, your social life off. 
Yeah, and then it will take time to form some connections, but you yeah. have to be you're not, okay You're with, not going to walk in day one and yeah. have a bustling, busy... Social schedule. Social calendar packs. and friends to go on walks with and get coffee with. Yeah. Like you, you probably will be doing that on your own yeah. until like... But there's Bumble BFF, like get on Bumble BFF. So like true. You need to meet people who are also new to London, you know, yeah. new to the city. And it's like, yeah. we're exploring together. It's like, oh my God, you moved alone. I moved alone too. Common and ground. And then it's common ground and there's a lot to explore and do together concern number four squashed okay concern number four i am quite an anxious person and get overwhelmed so not sure if living alone for the first time in a village outside of london is the smartest idea hmm, that's very true yeah i mean i would recommend living more in london that's a big jump actually because the village at the weekend will be bleak Des desolate especially oh. on a rainy day in october oh. A rainy day in November, it's mm. going to be a big shift from summertime in Melbourne. Mm. That's, That's going to sure. be a big culture mm -hmm. shock. So that is something to think about, but maybe it's something that you can embrace and tackle head on, you know, push yourself mm. out of your comfort zone and you've got to make yourself uncomfortable sometimes. And it is scary. Well, I think it's more just like, if you've got that niggling inside you, mm. that's like, oh, I kind of want to do that. And not because because for me scared. personally, if, yeah. if I was in an office and it was like, do you want to go on your own to live in the middle of France? I would say, no, I don't want to do that. But if I had that niggling, like if you've got that niggling inside you, that's like, oh, maybe, maybe like, I think you should go and pursue it. And I don't think he would regret it, but I do also think, yeah, moving it might be out tough. for the, it might be a lot. Moving out for the first time, moving across the world you haven't got your boyfriend. at the same time. It's a big life adjustment. Like you've gone from, you live at home, your boyfriend probably around the corner, you've got a social circle, you've got your life in Australia. It's going to be a massive jump to being alone in a village in the UK with no friends or family around. And you're on your own, you're doing your washing for the first time, you're doing your food shop for the first time. You gotta go to Bully Tesco. Yeah, transport, like it's a lot to- Figuring out the trains, the tube. It's a lot to do at once. And, but I think the fact that you're considering it, that's what I was trying to say, the fact that you're considering it and you've got that little and thing it, inside and it, and it you- it looks appealing to you, it does, yeah, you know? I think you should go for it because I think if you weren't cut out for this, you wouldn't have even entertained it. You would have exactly. just been like, no, I'm not leaving my boyfriend, I'm not leaving my life, I love yeah. my life here. I'll go on holiday to London like I'll go yeah. visit the UK yeah. with my boy we can go for two weeks yeah like that would be enough but the fact that you've entertained this and thought oh actually I might I might think about this I think you should probably give you I think I, you owe it yourself owe it to yourself to do it I think you're capable I'm excited and also dreading the thought of it excited excited That's, there you go you're, you're, you're excited and dreading it yeah it's scary but you're excited you want to do it but you're thinking oh but, oh, but I'm mm. not used to this but you're excited you're gonna do it I think this is probably because I'm really nervous and have a lot of reservations. But do you think I should go for it? Yeah, I think we should. Do. When I'm 85, here we go. Here we, she knows it. Where, you know, you know what you should do. You know do. what you need to do. When I'm 85 and looking back on my early 20s, I don't want to regret not taking this opportunity. But at the same time, is that enough of a reason to do it? It is. If that's the whole reason to Whether do it. it's a good or a bad experience overall, it will it's be good. only six months of your life. It's going to go super quick. The, the, the experiences and the growth and the learning you will do will be unprecedented. <laughs> unprecedented. <laughs> Won't it? <laughs> it I'm will. not sure if that was the word. <laughs> It'll be unprecedented. Invaluable. Unprecedented. Right? That makes so much sense. You guys know. Invaluable, unprecedented experiences. Unprecedented. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, unprecedented seri experiences. Seriously, like, yeah, whether they're positive or negative, you know, we have to go through. And don't, don't, don't be scared of the unknown. I mean, it's scary, mm -hmm. but try and embrace it. Grab life by the horns. Yeah, <laughs> grab life by the horns and go for <laughs> grab it. Grab it by the balls. And you can always come and visit us. There we go. Any advice, recommendations? <laughs> My recommendations or, or tips would be more appre than appreciated. Thanks, girls. Enjoy denim. Moving Enjoy. on. Enjoy the village. Yeah, it's but also it's going to be like vill um, English villages are gorgeous, and I imagine so different to Melbourne. Yeah, but you don't want to live in the. Village. You don't want to live there. That's for it's for el the elders. Mm. 
This is Sophia and Chintzia bringing you a broadcast. An urgent Interrupting message. the This viewing. is an urgent appeal. <laughs> <laughs> this is an urgent message. We need From you. From your founders. We need you. To subscribe absolutely we do we never ask right here we We don't ask much from you lot we you know we don't yeah we rarely ask of this stuff but we'd like to get to 100,000 we want that plaque it's important to us that's true we never had a plaque you know because you know where that plaque can go right here right here on our new shelf on this bad boy we need to decorate this bathroom right Mm, up we do and we've never received a plaque in our life and everyone else seems to have plaques we've never had a plaque so So if you would wish this is the urgent this is the urgent call out Please, thank you. (laughs) Enjoy the rest of the episode. Am I losing my best friend in my healing era? Ooh. Ooh. Hi, girls. I'm looking for a bit of advice. My best friend, I'll call her Sally. Sarah? Sally, she said. That's the name of choice. Um, And I are both 22. We've been friends. Are people still naming their kids Sally? Uh, Well, there's Sally Henson. The, the the famous brand of course Sally Hansen 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 of course Sally Hansen we've got Sally what are some famous Sallys in Hollywood not sure not it's sure it's a lovely name Sally is a lovely it's name pretty it is giving grandma mm. a little bit like grandma Sally mm. you know or auntie Sally auntie Sally yeah is cute. that one yeah. has a ring so me and Sally are both 22. We've been best friends for around six years. However, we are more like sisters and are extremely close. I have struggled with my mental health throughout my life and Sally has supported me with this and never let it affect our friendship. Sally also struggles with her own mental health during which times I'm also there for her. However, she deals with this in deals with this in self-destructive ways, such as drinking excessive excessively and sleeping 24 seven exercise has been a large contributor to helping my own mental health so i would often invite sally to come for walks with me or come to the gym with me but she doesn't enjoy it so often declines or will make plans with me and then not show up okay she also has poor time management so is always late for everything whereas i like to be quite punctual okay Over the last few months, I decided that it was time to start my healing journey. So I adopted more healthy habits, such as stopping drinking, coming off socials, exercising more, and really prioritizing myself. This is the first time in years that I have higher self-esteem and I am hopefully on my way to recovery. Mm. Around the same time as this, Sally also found a new boyfriend. Sounds like he's going to be bad news. Let's call him. Brian. There we go. This is unusual for our friendship because I have been in a few long-term relationships, but now, but I'm now single by choice. However, this is her first ever boyfriend. Okay, so this is, this is pivotal. This This is a pivotal moment. This first boyfriend (sighs) can do damage. Yeah, can do damage, especially if he's going to be no good. Mm. I am so happy because I think that Brian is a great guy. Oh, okay. Okay, good. And Thank good, God for and that. And good for her. That's okay, good. Thank God for that. Thank God. I was I was really thinking the worst. But during their relationship, I've begun to have less and less contact with Sally. Okay. I, of course, know that when you have a new boyfriend, it is super exciting and you want to spend a lot of time with them. Mm-hmm. So I would never be angry with her for that. But I can't but help but feel hurt by, by it. For example... Brian is a sports coach and recently made made Sally a gym plan and they've been going to the gym together. Oh, that's nice. But Sally, Sally says, this makes me feel unworthy because I've previously asked her constantly to come to the gym with me and she only came a handful of times. Okay. So you're just thinking, look, I tried to get you to the gym too to help you out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm glad that you're going with Brian, but I wish, you know. It's a bit of a sting in yeah. there. Yeah. It's like when you say to someone, oh, I really want to go with you to try these pancakes at this place. And then they go with someone and else. And then they go with someone else. And you see it on, on the story. Sounds like it was Low, coming with from the a location personal tag. experience. <laughs> it wasn't, but it, it would hit the same, right? Mm. I have tried to help her adopt healthier habits because I know this will help her mental health too, but it's beginning to feel exhausting by trying to help her help her and her not actively making an effort to change whilst she seems to enjoy doing these things with Brian. 
It seems that since I've taken steps to help help myself feel better, Sally has found Brian and we have drifted, drifted because we no longer share the same interests. I don't feel the need to force anything as I believe that friendships should be organic. Mm -hmm, very true i just wanted your opinion on whether friendships drifting in this way is a normal part of adulthood i am finding it difficult to reach out to her because we don't tend to agree on things Mm -hmm. like this i don't have the energy to have a disagreement with her i feel like i am already mentally checking out of the friendship so don't know whether to have a conversation or just to wait and see how things go i don't want to lose her but the friendship is also beginning to weigh me down Thanks, girlies. Okay. I think friendship dynamics... I think they can drift and they ebb and flow, right? They ebb and flow. Especially when a new boyfriend enters the chat. Especially Especially in the early 20s. It's usually been you, the one in relationships, and she's always been the single girl. Now it's different because now she's in a relationship and you're the single one. Um, This is her first relationship. She's finding her feet with that. Yeah, it's going to change the vibe of your friendship for a little bit. I don't think that's the most unusual thing in the world. Um, And if I were you, I would just hang on in there and see what happens. Like... I don't think this needs to be, like you said, like friendship should be organic. And Mm -hmm. I think this is just an ebb right now. Yeah, I I think just see where it goes. I do. Like you're used to, like you've had a couple boyfriends, right? You're kind of used to finding the balance and making sure you're prioritizing your friends. And for someone with, to have a, a boyfriend for the first time you get so wrapped up in, in just wanting to see a boyfriend land. boyfriend 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 it's like boyfriend land and it's like you forget that oh no my family is also important and mm. my friends are also important yeah and it, it it takes a while to like make that connection and, and to realize oh shit i've not seen sally in six months mm-hmm. it's been a while Where's i mean sally? three months or whatever you know Susan, that was Sally. Not seen Susan. And it, I, I think it's one of those. Me too. And I wouldn't be too especially, hasty. Especially, not to be negative, Nancy, but especially like with these early relationships, like it may, may come to an end. You may get a new boyfriend. Like this might be, this relationship might be over in six months' time. Yeah, you never know. And and then it's again another flow, another mm. ebb. Uh, you might come back together time. again. Of, you know and it, it especially in your 20s things are changing constantly in terms of relationships friendships yeah people are moving away people are getting new jobs people are busier you know we're not school anymore we're busy we're on different schedules we're on different schedules oh I've made we're leaning into s- different hobbies leaning into different things and yeah you're leaning into he- your healing era mm. she's leaning into brian right now brian land brian land um, i would just see so what I'd happens focus on you i wouldn't be too hasty to like cut things off and distance well, ha- have, yourself have a, have a conversation like you say like you don't see it going well yeah because i think these things can feel very big in the moment mm. and when it's currently happening mm-hmm. but i do think that you will probably find yourself looking back in let's say six months when she settled into her relationship she's found her groove and you guys then start to become super close again and this will then just be like a little blip that you had mm-hmm. um i think this is i think you just this is something just to ride the wave mm-hmm. with and mm-hmm. see what happens because this is new this is new territory it's new and i'm really happy for you yeah you know you're bettering yourself you go into the gym you're you're, you're saying you feel better than ever like you're yeah. single by choice like i feel like you're really thriving right now yeah and i don't Lots want to look forward to so much to look forward to and i don't want just you're saying it's weighing you down the thought of it i think just release it release let it, it go don't let someone live in your head no, rent free re- you know release it like check in on her if you want hey Sa- hey sally how you ho- doing hope you're doing okay hope you and brian are good if you want to go to yoga on let, sunday morning you know, at 11 let o'clock know. let me know but just no, but don't hold her to anything just know that okay she's not like me she's experiencing something different yeah i'm focusing on myself you don't want to force it you, do, you don't want to force it exactly. she may have had times where she feels like oh sally's been really distant recently but yeah. because you've been the one that's in boyfriend land yeah and busy life land you haven't noticed yeah. so she may have felt the way that you you're feeling now in the past boyfriend land does shift the thoughts completely shifts the thoughts completely all of a sudden her time is filled with a new person, with a boyfriend, 24-7. You want to, you know, yeah. When boyfriend. you're single, it's like, okay, Saturday. What are we doing? What, are we, what am I up to this weekend? Yeah. You know, but when you're in boyfriend land, it's, I'm going to be my boyfriend. 
obviously. Well, I'm props going to be with my boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, we'll props do something. Yeah. You know, it changes it's, things. It, it changes everything. And it's not those like usual Saturdays together where you might go to the cinema and, yeah. you know, go shopping. It's like boyfriend land. Yeah. So just see how it goes, I think. So, I think yeah. this is so normal. Like Chintzia said, you're in a great place. Yeah. Focus on that. Just keep checking in on your friendships. Focus on your other friendships too. Yeah. Like have fun. Summer's coming up. I'm sure you'll do things together. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. The friendship will keep flourishing. But it's so normal to feel distant and then come back together. Feel distant, it's come like back that. together. Yeah. It is, it is literally a part of adulthood. Like I've seen it happen to my mum. Yeah. Seen it Everyone. happen to my sister, sisters. It's inevitable. It's, it is inevitable because it's like when we were at school we were at school no one's going anywhere no one's really got a boyfriend no, no. one you know we're everyone's on the same schedule everyone's on the everyone same schedule everyone lives close by right. everyone knows the same people yes. but then you we go, go to off. the same establishment yeah. in the same city yeah then it's different jobs different different social circles different cities and, and then when babies start entering the chat oh, we're yet God. to experience that but bloody hell bloody I'm imagining hell, that's gonna be rough it's gonna be rough when everyone's got seen kids in six months it's how we're pushing eight months at this <laughs> you know those six kids that she popped out a badge are taking up all a bloody really time. Taking up a lot of time. So, like, it's it happens to everyone. Things are gonna. It's a. It's it's life. It's a part of life. Yeah. Maybe talk to your parents about it. Yeah. They'll definitely have experienced it. Or if you've got any older siblings An or auntie. older cousins or even colleagues at work, like um, yeah. everyone can relate to feeling like yeah, that. Yeah. Because, like, also, my mum has had friends would have had friends in her twenties that she's not friends with anymore. Not that this is is gonna be gonna gonna die mm. this friendship but it's just a uh, uh you know like You've we have see people what that happens. we would hang out with three four years ago and and, and don't yeah. anymore or equally people and nothing who, dramatic happened you know who we used to hang out with haven't seen them in a couple of years now we're hanging out with them again like that's exactly. just the way you, exactly. you, you can't predict things it's an you know? ebb and a flow it's like water that's the message of the episode. Ebb, Ebb and, and flow. flow. And it's just riding the wave. And also our lady Not Emily stressing. moving to Denham. Go for it. Ebb, ebb and flow. And let's flow. And also like your relationship with your boyfriend is going to ebb and flow. Like there might be a time, sorry, I'm going back to Denham lady. <laughs> there might be a time where he wants to move to Thailand for three months. And you're going to have to be supportive and say, go, go do it. I'm going to be sad, but I'm going to be okay because I love you. And we've got the rest of our lives together. Ebb and flow. Ebb and I feel really relaxed. Okay. okay, this one's fun. We've got kiss slash dating advice. Smoochy, oh, smoochy. Oh, well, me and Sophia, you know, Our since, kiss advice since would a be. young age, you know, I remember the first time we watched Angus Long's and Perfect Snogging. Snogging. That scared the life Living. out of me, that saliva snog. We definitely had not had a kiss by the time we'd watched that. <laughs> and that the way that that boy was snogging, what's her name? With the sl and, and the string of slime. Oh, that, no. that is things of nightmares. <laughs> oh my that god, that is actual horror movie Literally. level like shit. That so, and then I remember thinking, "Fucking hell, is that, that going to be me?" Like? <laughs> Fuck. Just, just, just. Make sure I got a dry the mouth. Exchange of saliva, saliva, and okay, take okay. it away. Looking for a little bit of advice. I started dating a little later than all my friends. I'm 23, but genuinely had no interest before then. Mm -hmm. I went on some hinge dates Ooh. and my first kiss during a date led into a two year relationship. Okay. okay, so sorry, I think she's 25 now, but okay. she was 23 when she started dating. Okay. This relationship ended and now I'm back to dating again. And I really Congrats. freak out when it comes to kissing and dating etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on dates with three guys since mm -hmm. they have all kissed me whoa Great. two out of three were terrible but I salute them for having the confidence yes what I struggle with is body language to suggest wanting a kiss okay having the confidence to be aware people are around and still going in for it anyway mm -hmm. and that I'm so caught up in my head that I'll be a bad kisser do you have First of all, you've been in a two-year relationship. I don't think you're really a bad kisser. You Me know neither. how to smoochy, smoochy, smooch. You've got the moves. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's more so with like this, th with a stranger. Yes. With, with like, okay, say we're on a third date. You know, I want to give him some good vibes. Like I want to get close. Yeah, let's get cozy. And it, and it is, it's body language is very important. Yeah. It is. Do you have any advice on? Number one, body language to suggest Honestly, a kiss. I think I'm a body language expert for a lot of advice. <laughs> 
Two. Okay, well, let's answer this one. Let's, she's got three points. So first one, body language is a just a kiss. Chintz, what's your top tips? Right, so I went on a date. Do you remember my date? Which one? I went on a date with a boy. And when those ladies were like, so when he went to the toilet and these okay. ladies went, you are a gorgeous couple. <laughs> they were a bit drunk. They were like, you guys are a gorgeous couple. How long have you been together? I was like, this is our second date. And she was like, oh my God. The body like, language. The body language. And She's the body language expert over she here. She said, whoa, the body language I was getting from you two was that you, you were, you were, you've been together for years. And I was like, no Known you way. for a thousand years. I was like, no way. Like, this is our second date. Like, we've not even so kissed. So talk us through. I was like that. I was like, we've not even kissed. But she was like, your body language, it's screaming closeness, the two of you. And then he came back and she was like, so I hear this is a second date. <laughs> and we're like, yes, yes, yes. And she was just discussing our body language, that we were open. So I'll give you the suggestion. It's, it's leaning. Close. Close, but if you don't, if you're not feeling it, it's, sorry to the audio listeners, <laughs> but it's like hands on the lap, arms and feet Keeping to yourself. Keeping yourself to yourself. It's like legs crossed. It's kind of stiffness. It's hands in. It's like not even looking in their direction. Yeah. But open body language is a subtle lean. Yes. Open the shoulders out. Stroking the arm, being tactile. Yeah, even just like arms touching a knee, touching, yeah, you know. Yeah, foot touching. Foot touching. Just breaking that like barrier between you. Yeah, and the eye contact and more of the closeness. That's why I'd always suggest. And just being like locked in to that person in. that's why like a dinner date is hard when you're set opposite each other i feel like you can't get that closeness it's nice to sit side by side it's nice to sit on the booth side by side if you're in a bar yeah on the sofa and you can get super close it's very natural and then a kiss just comes natural after three drinks yeah you know one two a couple yeah. sips all it takes is a bit of eye contact and you know close a lean. and a lean <laughs> so that's the body language yes number two should you peck on a first date or a little more whatever floats your boat i, I mean it's, it's whatever the vibe is right yeah i think i think with that one just don't try and plan that i think you just see what happens yeah. like because for me if, if if our first kiss was just a peck i think that was strange yes because it, it, it's like we're not in a like that's giving like, okay bye like i'm not just that's not our first kiss. No, a pet. Like, uh, like if I was signing, say a first date was a coffee date. Mm -hmm. I'd just give an appropriate hug. Like we ain't snogging. I'm not snog in the daylight. It's, you know, it's 1 p.m. The sun is blaring In on Cafe us. Nero. Cafe Nero, you know. Yeah, it, I, but also a pet. It's like, we don't, we're not at that level of, I just I hug. know exactly you what, know what you I mean. mean. And then if he did go in for a snog, I think, right, like, now. I guess I, you'd go with it. Mm -hmm. But... I think I think you just got to get the vibes with that one. Everyone's yes. different. Like some people, you might not kiss them till the fifth date. And Other people, you might be sleeping with them on the first date. Like yeah. everyone's different. I, I think I do go think with what you're comfortable kiss, with. Kiss early, and then it's a good sign of um, you know sexual attraction. And you know, you know what you, get you the should genuinely watch because it's priceless. Here we go. Matthew Hussey's five top tips for a first date. There we go. They're, they're priceless tips. Because they're brilliant they tips. They really are. It's all about like, like we just said, breaking that physical barrier super early. Just uh, just, just like say if like, right, let's let's picture this. I'm on a date. I'm next to him. We've got a little table there and it's got our drink. Maybe I'd lean over, grab my drink, just put my uh, ha hand on, on, his, the leg. on his knee. Breaking it early. Breaking so it, it doesn't early. feel awkward. Yeah, and it's just like, I'm comfortable with you. Yeah. I'm comfortable grabbing, touching your shoulder or, you know, Starting whatever. Starting with a compliment, Starting with a compliment. You should honestly watch it. I don't know what the other tips are, but it was pretty good. Google it. Ma Matthew Hussey, top Google dating it. tips. But there's no right or wrong. You've said, should you kiss on a first date or do a little more? There is no right or wrong. Whatever the vibes are. Look, Whatever his the vibes body language are. might be super closed up. And it's like, okay, well, we're not going to go in for a kiss because that's going to be super. And also sometimes like on a first date, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Like if it's like a bit of a, a bye, like that can, all, that can sometimes out. be a bit of an awkward moment. Like, okay, mm. see ya. Like it can depend where you are who's around like don't yeah. feel like you need to force it if it, it like kisses will naturally happen they will and that's what it is
They will. Number three, any confidence tips? And then her last little paragraph, I genuinely believe I am a good kisser. I'm just shy and lacking experience with someone new, new. that's not a boyfriend. Yeah. I've watched Legally Blonde a few times to channel Elle Woods Absolutely. confidence. Okay, yeah. So it's just like, it is awkward. Dates are awkward. I'm very awkward. They can be awkward. They can be awkward. It's like, oh my God, this is a stranger. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm not used to this. I'm very aware of people around us. Yeah, like, oh, it makes me awkward if people think we're on a first date. Like, that's making me awkward. (laughs) Sometimes you can overthink that. Yeah, and you can get in your head a little bit. But I think every date is an opportunity to get to know someone new. That's really fun. Yeah. They might not be for you. They might be for you. And every um, date is a, is an experience. Like whether it's a good date, sure. a bad date, every date like helps you figure out more about what you do like and what you don't like. And there's yeah. no, you can never waste time being on a date. Like every, like never. the more the better, the more you can compare. It, it's it's all beneficial, I and think. And every date builds your confidence for the next date. Exactly. It really does. Exactly. Like, it really does. Once you're in that dating flow like you're just popping them out yeah and in terms of confidence just know this man has asked you on a date he's seen something he likes about you yeah so really channel that yeah channel that confidence it's like you know i think the best thing to remind yourself of is this is to see if i like him this is the golden this isn't about me trying to make him like me. I'm not trying it's not to about make him liking you me. happy. I'm not trying to impress you. No, I this is my time out. to exactly. figure out if I like you. If I like, see it as a test on him. Exactly. Don't see it as, oh, I really want him to like me. Like, no, no. this is your time to see if you like him. Yes. If you want to see him again, mm-hmm. not just about wanting him to see you again. No, not at all. Exactly. That comes secondary. That's the golden rule. So it's like, have that confidence. It's like, okay. Are you worthy? Let's see. Let's you see. Know, rock, let's rock and roll. And what me and Chinsa always say, what's the worst that can happen? Someone what dies. The worst? No, and that's, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's never going to happen. The worst thing on a first date, like they can be short, they can be snappy, they can be quick, they can be... They can be an hour. Oh they my can god! Be 45 I thought you were talking minutes. about the man, snappy man. I thought, oh my god! <laughs> the I first thought, day. Oh my god! I thought you were like the men could be short, they could be snappy. <laughs> Lord Farquaad. Like, what on earth? <laughs> yeah, but okay. sometimes the, you go into date. a first date thinking, oh my yes. god, I'm going to be here for like three hours. Like, yes. no, you can you can arrange a coffee, yes. half an hour, 45 minutes. It doesn't have to take up your whole no. day. You can always get off. You there's can always, always leave. An, there's always an excuse. There's always an escape route. Yeah, but those like those dating like first snogs, they're fun. They're like, exciting. You know what it's like? You're just seeing each other on a date and it's like, yeah. oh my God, we had a snog last time. Like we're gonna have a snog. Are we gonna little, kiss again today? We're gonna have a little snog today. Like it's really it, fun. See it as a fun thing. Yeah. You know? And the more you do it, the more confident you'll exactly. get. Also, you've been in a two year relationship. You know how to do this. You these know how to loosen the lips. Okay, to finish us off today. To wrap us off on this we've spring got Wednesday. Something that I think might anger a lot of us. But it's some triggering but, for people. But it's um you know, stuff that we need to hear sometimes. Do so, we? No, I mean we don't, <laughs> but it, it's good to be aware of of these sorts of things. <laughs> so our Susan here found a to-do list. So you're I'm thinking, no stranger to do lists. You're thinking to-do thinking list that could night. be, yeah, tasks of the next yeah, 7 a.m. wake up, 7.30 wash hands. Also, also giving, you know, <laughs> five-year plan list. Don't forget to blah, 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 blah. Goal list. Yeah. Take goal. parcels back. There we go. But this to-do list, it was a to-do list of girls. As in? In his notes. Uh-huh. My instinct of that is that is girls he wants to sleep with. Right. That's what it's giving. To do, to do. To do list. To do list. It's not completed. No. Yeah, it's not done. It's not being ticked off. Exactly. It's to do. Hi girls. Love the pod. Can't wait to see you in September. See you in September. Ooh, it's coming around thick and fast, I tell you. It is now. But I'm in a sticky situation and need urgent help. Sorry for the long email in advance. We love long. We're here for it. Me and Brian have been together for four and a half years. Wow. So four and a half years worth of history. But it's been rocky and an inconsistent path. We first met and got together when we were 16. We are now 20. Okay, That's a so hard age to sustain a relationship. It is. There's a lot that changes from, from the 16 to the early 20s. We're figuring out uh, what our boundaries are. Do we even ne- yet know them yet? Like exactly. we're still only 20. There's a lot to figure out. Lives are changing. Exactly. That's a really tough yeah. block it's of really time. T- like I to keep a relationship. Anyone who got together in the teens and are still together, you know, now. In the, you know, in their 30s. Uh, that is 
well done. So we were originally together for two years, ended when we were 18, as I was, as I was tired about him li always lying about little things. Okay. We were on and off for nearly a year after that, and I ended up cutting him off completely until he reached out to me in October. October just gone. Yes. Okay. He sent me a long message telling me he'd been reflecting on himself for months but couldn't stop thinking about me, saying the connection we had was just unmatched and he can't see himself being with anyone else. It's quite for nice to hear. That is quite nice to hear. Because he could have just gone off and been single. Yeah. Like you're 20 yeah. now. Cracked on Go. with that to-do list. Crack on, yeah. And he can't see himself being with anyone else. For reference, we were each other's first loves and I was the first girl he'd ever kissed and slept with. Special. Um, and we always said that although we were so young, it genuinely felt like we were made for each other. You guys. Oh, this is really sweet. I spoke to my friends about it and everyone agreed that it had been a while since we were together last. And people can genuinely change. So Definitely. I decided to give him one last chance. I support that decision. Me too. It's that, you know... Sometimes it's right. The Sometimes general it rule works. is is to not go back to the ex because you know how it's going to end. It's going to end how it always ends. But there are some scenarios where where if, it's a good decision. If growth has been had and growth and change, mm. then yeah, and for sure. both people are choosing each other. Exactly. Who are we to say that? Exactly. Not love. Everything was absolutely perfect. Like we were living in our own little bubble, and nothing else mattered. We were always going on dates, spending time with each other's families, and it felt like no time had passed at all. Oh. I have an amazing, amazing relationship with his mom, we're in America, oh. and siblings, and he does with mine. Great. He asked me if I'd been with anyone else in the time we hadn't spoken, and I answered honestly and told him, yeah, I'd been seeing a couple of people as it had been almost a year of us not speaking. Mm. He took it well and said it was understandable. Well, yeah, well, yeah obviously. we're breaking up for a year. I didn't anticipate us getting yeah. back together, so. So I asked him the same question. Oh gosh. Oh, here we go. He told me he'd only been seeing one other girl who he had slept with, but he just never felt the connection with her that he felt with me. So it wasn't worth continuing. Okay. He had also said he'd only spoken to one girl as he genuinely didn't have the time to pursue things a lot, you know, be out partying, getting with multiple girls, he, as he is an athlete. And is at uni. And of course, I believe that as I know how dedicated he is to sports. Okay, so he painted himself to have had quite a wholesome break, healthy lifestyle, just was, training, working. Just just slept with this one girl, had dated this one girl. Didn't really have time for much else. Yeah. And you're thinking, okay, yeah. Yeah. And this conversation took place months ago. We continued to be fine as normal until a couple of weeks ago. I started to have a bad feeling, oh no, about something. So I went through his phone. Not the oh, bad feeling. No, not the bad, you know, we just feel sick. Where does that come from, a bad feeling? It's it's the mother gods. It's the universe. It really is. I tell just, you something. It is, it's that's the intuition. It's that gut feeling. It's that sickness thing in the pit so of your stomach. what did she find in the notes? I know, the so journal? I went through his phone. I know it's not the best thing to do, but I have a very strong intuition. She sure Yeah, you does. always should follow your intuition, always. So when I have a bad feeling, I can't help but follow it. But it's good. It's a good trait to have, I yeah. think. I ended up, I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps. Sam, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. I'm feeling like this nerves. is me. I'm getting really nervous. I ended up finding a notes page in his phone with a table full of girls' names. A table? A table. Not an Which Excel. he has slept with. And also a long, oh my God. No. And also a long list of girls he intended to get with at some point <sighs> underneath the table. So oh. on the table, it was the conquest ticked off, extra names of thing, women oh, he would like to conquer. No. Who are these that people? Just people in the city? Well, he's at Hometown. uni. It's as I was thinking, I'd like to have a crack at Emma one day. Oh you know? my God. Kim's kind of cute too. God. Shit, that would make me want to vom. Shit. The way I would cry. I'd be sobbing. <laughs> the way I would cry. My eyes would be out here. My head would be throbbing. I wouldn't be eating or sleeping for days. Eat, yeah, lack of eating, lack of sleep, no appetite. Oh, it's no lack appetite. Of, it's Can't no appetite it. that's really the worst part about all of this. Yeah. It's, it's like, I love food. But I feel sick. But constantly. I feel sick. You've made me feel sick. <laughs> nauseous god no one wants oh, to see that oh i feel that. sick i confronted him about it and for a solid hour he claimed he had no idea 
Shut Oh, please. Up. I've literally caught you red-handed. Yeah, the last thing you should seriously. try and do is deny it. So he claimed he had no idea what, what, what it was, even though I was 100% sure what it was. It's a to-do list. As it was literally had my name at the top of the table. <gasps> yeah, number First one. First person he slept with. <gasps> uh, 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 Not in chronological order. God, that's oh very attention to detail. God. So obviously this that was everyone he slept with that once you'd broken up then in that yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Because like you were, you were his And first. he said it was only one. After going back and forth, and me telling him multiple times that all I wanted was the truth. He finally confessed that it was what I thought it was. It makes it so much worse that he denied it in the yeah, first place. come on. Like, you know how stupid you look right now? I was so annoyed because I, I wouldn't have cared if he just told me he slept with five girls across a year. How can I be mad about something that happened while we were broken up? Yeah, of course. I also understand that with him being, you know, 19 and single, he would want to explore with other people as I was the only girl he'd ever slept with for three years. It's, yeah, it's natural yeah. instincts. Yeah, it's like you didn't need to lie about no, that. No, you didn't need to lie you know, about the it. The only reason I was so upset and hurt was I'd asked him for this, asked him this specific question and he lied to my face. Yeah. I was also appalled that he had a list of girls he wanted to get with. Yeah, Practically a to-do list. That's worse than the list. That's the, worse. Than, yeah. That's worse. Because... Everyone, some, most people keep a log. Most people have a list of a but couple names. A to-do list. But a to-do list, please. It's like, That's who really are you? Tough. Who do you think you are? Yeah, who do you think who you are? Who do you think are? you are? Like, we're, we're, we're women Making with a wish souls. List. Like, this is not like a Christmas list. Mm. Like, bloody hell. Mm. As I think it's just gross. Also so disrespectful to all the girls on the list. Yeah, yeah it's like, right. so how he's going to get in... How he's going to pursue them is just, it's purely to just- To tick them off. To tick them off. Yeah. You know, when he's going to, and that's why guys chat so much shit all the time. Yeah. Because they're simply just trying to sleep with you. And they'll say whatever the they list. can to get to that point, And then it's over. God, that's I hate sick. them. Sick. Oh, literally disgusting. He apologized and said he understood exactly how I felt, but didn't want to tell me the truth about the girls he'd gotten with. Um... Why? As he regretted them all. And not only oh, with them, please. he missed having me a re excuse. Oh, please. Like you were single. It, you've done nothing, like you did nothing wrong. You lied. But you lied. However, on top of this, Brian has a mixed friendship group of girls and boys, which I have not met. There's no girls on the friendship oh, group that are on the list, are my they? my God, I hope not. Which I have not met. When going through his phone, I also found pictures of him cuddled up in bed with one of his girl besties. <gasps> <gasps> Uh, 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 oh, oh my, my god, god I oh. no, th this is getting really like my eyes. this is real dangerous territory now this is with these girl besties abort mission and get because, out of here you know it's gonna be oh you know we're just mates we're just you no, know friendly get out i don't fancy we've never slept together it's gonna you know lo and behold out. oh they've had sex six times do get you know out. what i mean it's yeah. just this is messy now i was fuming about this as this is a girl he I? speaks to regularly Oh, brilliant. And he claims nothing has ever happened with. Lies. Oh, it's, it, You're a liar. It's like, Brian, you have to understand now. How can I trust you? Can't. I can't. How can I trust your word? I have photographic evidence of you physically close to this lady. In bed. In bed. Cuddling. And you're telling me, and I'm supposed to believe you that you've never kissed, you know, done anything Don't sexual see her in that with, light. with this, not attracted to her at all. When you've lied to me about just sleeping with some girls when I'm broken up and you've got a to do list. So the math ain't math in. Like, I can't trust a word that comes out of your mouth at this point. No. <sighs> it was all going so well. Like you guys, oh. you got back together. Everything was going great. I have never even been cuddled up in bed with one of my boy mates. Yeah, exactly. Who is topless. Who is? He was topless. <sighs> yeah, oh, that's skin on skin. Please. Skin on, you're telling me she didn't turn around and give him a, a kiss. The skin to word, skin. skin. Skin on skin. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, it's your no. worst nightmare come true. Also, a couple of the names on the to-do list are his girl mates. Disgusting. <gasps> I called it. I called it. Disgusting. It's over. I'm oh, sorry. Oh no. Disgusting. No, sorry. Never, you're breaking I, up with him. Do you know what? This confirms to me right now, here and now, I'm never trusting a man that says she's just a friend. That is the confirmation just now. This is the confirmation oh we God, need. Oh my God, that's terrible. Oh, I never see her like that. 
Why have but you wrote her, her name then, in but your you'd phone? Sleep with, you would sleep with her. She gave you the green light. You would sleep with her. So yeah, that's what they say. Ooh. Oh my God. He'd said he will cut them off immediately and can see how that would be an issue. But my question is- Oh, can you see that? <laughs> Thank you. Wow, you've got eyes. Wow. But my question is, knowing that that's the type of friendship it is, yeah. why on earth- would he even continue those friendships once we got back together? Yeah, it's giving disrespectful. Yeah. It's like, fair enough if that was the dynamic. You know, we went together for a year. Mm -hmm. Whatever. You were getting up to whatever you were getting up to. But the fact that you continue these inappropriate girl-boy friendships yeah. while we're back together, I just look like a twat. Yeah. I just look like a twat to these well, you've friends. I've never, never met them. Never you've, met them. You've lured me into a false sense it, of security of, and trust. Yeah, of what you you painted this image that you had yeah. this year off. You know, just not really doing much, working, training, dated one girl. That was about it. Like mm. you had those before we get back together. Let's mm. get it all out in the open mm -hmm. and. Now that you've lured, you've lured me back in and my feelings are back and I'm comfortable mm. again and things are better than mm -hmm. ever and we've been spending time with our families together. Mm -hmm. Now I found out all this shit about- You've just tarnished everything, everything. that's happened for the past you've six You've ruined months. it. He's ruined it. Yeah. He's completely ruined it. So I really don't know how to go forward with this. I you can't, don't. I can't get over how easily he lied to me. Exactly. Yeah. And I can't help thinking there may be other things he's lying about. Well, yeah, because yeah. now we've got trust issues. Exactly. So now I'm paranoid that you're constantly lying to me and this is how this is this is how this is this is how trust issues are formed. Yeah. I like, don't want to be in a relationship where yeah. I'm worrying about my yeah. boyfriend's intentions or fantasies about other people girls especially girls that we fucking know like no it's no um, it's just ruined now he's ruined it so yeah i can't help with thinking there may be other girl other things he's lying about if he can lie that easily with no regrets or remorse yeah it's so annoying because despite the bumps in the road he genuinely is my first love and only boy i've ever seen a proper future with you'll find another one i've never you'll find another one i've never cared about anyone more than this boy so of course i want to see the best yeah see the best and hope that things will sort themselves out. But trust is a massive thing to me. It's huge. You don't trust your boyfriend. It's finished. It ain't gonna be fun. It's not gonna be happy. Like yeah. at the end, like that's the most valuable thing. So easy to so break. Precious. And he's being careless. He he's it's it's on him. He's ruined yeah. it. And I don't think you could get back into this. It's never going to be what it was, okay? You're reminiscing about when you guys were 16, 17, and it's your first... I get it. There's so much history. There's memories. There's that comfortability. There's the attachment. But you've tried to give it another go. You thought, okay, I'm going to let you back in. I'm going to see what we can do. And he's ruined it again. You can't keep giving your life no, to this no, guy. No. You've already given him four years. Don't give him yeah. any more because he doesn't appreciate it. Any help, we really appreciate the PS of attached pics of as well as pictures of his notes. <gasps> so Not he's, notes. A, I mean, yeah, cute looking couple, really cute. Yeah, so cute, um, but whatever. There's cute people one, everywhere. You can find another one. I mean, you're gorgeous. You're, 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 you're such a catch. <sighs> wow. You're such a catch. Let's see the list. Um, we've got another, oh, it's mirror selfie galore. That's kind of cute. Oh, Doing the hearts and the, oh, and another one. Yeah, you guys are cute. You're a catch also. Here is, oh my bloody God. Stop, let me see it. <gasps> Not an actual table. So just for context, this is how many women are on the to-do to to -do do list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 ladies that he would like to sleep with or in his conquer, to conquer list. So when are you, when do you think you're going to get time, get round to that? Because you've asked me to get back together. When did you expect? So, when were you going to fit that in? Yeah. And then the ladies on the, on the- um, Conquered list. On the conquered list already is one, two, oh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, no, 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 it's sorry. Sorry, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yep, it's six. And you, you yourself is at the top. Yes, you are at the top of the list. First place. Yeah, let me just fact check that with the name that emailed in. 
yeah susan that's you it is what it yeah it's it, yeah. wow it's the 15 girls to conquer for me yeah it's it's yeah. like you can give it another shot you can try and forgive him but it's for always going to come back to this like you've issue. been here Don't, and this trust yeah. issue he was topless like the the fact is you've seen also, what you need like, to see he was topless with his friend in bed and he's claiming that nothing's ever happened with her and you expect us to believe that when she's, she's on the girl list but on she's on the to-do list. list like you've just caught yourself in the biggest lie ever yeah try and see this from like imagine if your friend was telling you this mm. it would be very clear what you would say to her you right you would be appalled you would be like well you're not fucking going you there would be again appalled. ew the issue, it's because he was your first everything. It's so much harder to let go of your first. Yeah. Right? He was your first kissed, first love, you know, first everything. And, and he also does hold a special place in He's saying your heart. a lot of right things. He he's is. saying how I can never find a connection yes. like this. I really want to get back together. Like you are, yes. you are back together apparently. Yes. Yes. But I just think. And that lures you in. Like we You don't deserve this. No one deserves this. No. no one should find a to-do list of women that your boyfriend would like to sleep with. It's as simple as that, you know? And he should have had the common sense to have deleted that out of his notes when well, he. And also he's just lied to you about well, what exactly. he did on his break. And it's yeah. like, it, it's more than just the well, list. It's just like, this just speaks Well, it's volumes. like, what else do you think you're going to be able to get away with? Yeah. Like I'm not a twat. And like, I don't deserve this kind of treatment. You're a catch. So you say, I'm a catch. I'm a catch. I'm going to find someone I'm not better. not going to struggle. And who's going to treat me better. Yeah. And you know, yeah. This And you you said the first time you broke up was because of the little lies. And here we are again. And here we are again. So how Aleppo many never times changes spots. there's that quote that's like, the universe will keep showing you the same lesson over and over again. Until you learn. Until you learn it. And mm -hmm. this is your second time round now. Mm -hmm. Being with this guy, little lies are coming yeah. up. Like how much longer is it going to take yeah. to do what you did the first time yeah. again? Like, yes, you know it, what you need to do. Exactly. No one's saying that it's easy. Exactly. exactly. But you've been here before and it's history re literally repeating Please. itself. Literally. And, you know, he can try and talk his way out out of it and charm his way out of it and you're gonna be you know Say you're gonna right want to melt into that mm -hmm. but you have to be strong and know your worth and be like it it's, if it's black and white it's you black and white you've lied to me again and you've again and again and again, again. And again. Like, how many more times do you want this boy to lie mm -hmm. to you until you realize who he is exactly. unfortunately and like the easiest option yes yeah, to stay of course, it's always, always the easiest option. You know, he's crying. He's saying he's sorry. Oh, I forgive you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Let's go have a nice weekend. There we go. Let's go cinema. But that's not a healthy relationship. It's not a long, long-standing relationship no. that you've got yourself in. There's way much. There's so much more to experience and enjoy, and mm -hmm. so many amazing people out there to meet. And you've already been with this guy for four years, like. You know everything about this guy. It, this is all you're going to learn mm -hmm. from this relationship. It's time to take yourself out of it. Start again. Meet some new people. Have a clean slate. Because the yeah. relationship has really been tarnished. Yeah. And, and you can... It's, it's never going to be what it was in yeah. its glory days. You've had that. You've experienced that. It's great. Yeah. But it's not there anymore. And you can have love for someone and you can love someone and care for them, but also know that they are not right for you. And I think that's what this that's situation what this is. is. It's like, but I love him so much. Like he's been a part of my life since I was 16. Yeah, it's massive. It's massive. Okay, you love and you care for him, but he's not the best for you. No. He, 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 he's not the best thing for you. It's, it, you need, yeah, and it's about realizing, okay, I love him, I care for him, I wish him the best, but this is not a healthy situation for me to be in. No, the end. The end. Logging Thank off. You. Logging off. Let's find a quote. I think we need one. Yes. I've got two here. Okay, hit us. My Pinterest isn't loading. <sighs> you are the CEO of your own life. Hire, fire, and promote accordingly. I love that one. I love that one. This guy, a couple of guys need yeah. firing today, I yeah. think. And we'll hire some newbies. It's yeah. as simple as that. Get it's some black fresh meat and on white. the roster, on the payroll. It's black and white. I trust myself and make decisions that are right for me. Amen. So that is what we need going into this week. We're moving to denim. Absolutely. And we're getting rid of boys with to do lists. Hell 
yeah that's what we're doing and we'll see you next wednesday thank you so much for listening everyone if you would like an extra episode of the podcast you can get one every single monday over on patreon this is our last episode in this studio Ah! next wednesday we'll be in a whole new space but hopefully it will look exactly the same it's gonna look and sound the same but for us we're gonna just be looking out onto something different something different um so email your dilemmas to hello at the girls bathroom.com follow us on instagram at the girls bathroom tiktok and on youtube if you didn't already know the full episode's on here happy springing love yes love yes see you on monday and wednesday Bye. bye